One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. <laughs> Is this recording? Yeah, it's recording right now. You see what happens here. We, we don't make decisions ever. Okay. Okay. There you go. This guy's got it. All right. Welcome, guys, to the first podcast of 916 Hot Rod Garage, the Daily Misfire, all the good stuff. All that good stuff. Um, we're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff today, Just questions oh, yeah. that you guys had, and um, yeah, we'll just jump right into it. Right. All right, so the first stuff that we're gonna talk about for you guys is our project cars, because I know a lot of you guys are kind of questioning us about our projects and some of our stories and some of our plans that we have. Um, so I guess the first one that we'll talk about, that's the biggest one that we're working on right now is our C10 project that we have, so. Yes. Yeah, so I'd say, what was it? A few days or about a four or five days ago now probably yeah we picked up the 65 c10 for three grand <clears throat> um we may have been making really good progress on it right honestly um i mean that is in part due to the fact that i have a lot more time now right being that i don't work in a fluorescent box anymore <laughs> <laughs> right yeah because he used to work at o'reilly's and we were always planning on trying to do this probably for the past like oh since we were kids yeah probably like, like 12 way, 10 like way I mean, yeah yeah we were always planning on buying cars and having fun with them and then doing whatever whether that's selling them or mm -hmm. doing doing whatever with them at some point but we always planned on doing it but then we had no money for a consistent period in time and then yeah after that you had work and then i had school and work out here and we both like never really had time until he left O'Reilly's because that's where he worked at um, for about a year, right? Is where... Yeah, about a year and a half. And yeah. then we would have done it before then, but then I was working as a mechanic at a Kia dealership, and then he was still doing other stuff, school. And... I had baseball at that point, so yeah. I was still really focused on that. I had kind of given up on that on That's by that point. Yeah, I wasn't yet broken down yet, so... Um, yeah, now we're both cripples. Now we're both cripples because we <laughs> both hurt from college sports. Um, and yeah. so, But now it kind of like all came together where I'm still in school, but it's kind of like the falling off point for school. So we're like hopefully last semester. That's the goal. Last full-time semester and then maybe like two classes after this. But um, we'll get through that. And then you came off and you're kind of in between jobs because there's a different role that you're wanting to take with another yeah uh, there's another company that company. i'm looking to start with um but you know obviously i'll still be doing this and right working on the cars and well and it gives you a better opportunity to work out here more because of just the timing scheduling of that job too so oh yeah definitely we're not going to get into that yet but for him yeah we won't get into the specifics yet yeah. but um yeah rolling right along on the c10 project mm -hmm. um I'd say, I mean, it's probably, besides paint and body, we'll probably be done with the major stuff in a little, hopefully, about a week. Yeah, hopefully this week. We have parts coming in from Texas, um, and then once they're in, hopefully it says probably around Friday, which is probably around the same time this is going to drop, so, um, on YouTube and stuff, but we'll have that for you guys, probably... Well, it'll be videos throughout for that. Probably different, next, different installs. Yeah, different stuff. installs and stuff. I think the next one you guys are going to see is um, probably us lowering the back of the truck. Yeah, which that was it sick. looks it looks so cool. good. Which I haven't taken any pictures of it yet because it's been in the shop because we've been doing other stuff to it. So um, we've been kind of sanding on it. We've been messing with the bed, um, which that's probably going to be another video of us installing the bed, um, the wood, because it's a wood bed and it was yeah. all rotted out. So we're doing it different way a non-original way of doing it but i think it's going to look really good yeah. and under budget for what we're trying to do so that's always and it'll be good for you guys to kind of see how we did it so if you want to do it yourselves if whether right. you're going to flip a truck or if you're going to keep it you can you know you can know a way how to do a wood bed, a wood bed in a cost-effective way to where it also looks good yeah it'll probably for us overall for the bed it'll probably be less than 300 bucks to do the entire yeah. bed with hardware with the wood and wood stain and probably take us i mean you can do it in a weekend if you wanted to bust it out so it's yeah. if you had a wood bed that's rotting apart and stuff and you didn't want to spend the probably 1500 bucks it would be from uh lmc truck or one of those places yeah. 
um, this would be the way to do it, and it would look good. So, um, but yeah, the trucks roll around along. You'll see a bunch of stuff on that. Um, the next car that we're you guys are gonna see probably as far as video stuff goes, and it's already done, but it's um, my girlfriend Abby's '67 Camaro. Um, we put disc brakes on it probably the last over the last couple weeks. Um, it would have been a weekend, but parts were an issue, uh, as it always goes. Um, but we got the brakes all together. She's actually driving it, so then we'll hopefully do. I'll put all the video stuff together because with other stuff in the truck, I haven't been able to edit as much as I would like to. But um, you'll see that, and we did exhaust and stuff on it too because it had a really rotted out muffler. Um, so we did a Flowmaster that I just had from the Wrecking Guard or something. I don't even know where I got that Flowmaster, but <laughs> not a bad sounding. No, it's in it, line six. It's a little straight six. <laughs> I think it's a two thirty straight six, but it, it sounds a whole lot better than it did. And me and her went to um, Roseville about a week ago um, and it was and just driving right next to each other and when I could hear it over the Nova it was it was cool to just hear it because you never heard it before so it was kind of cool <laughs> actually hearing something from a car when you could hear it over the Nova yeah well that's a whole other story um, <laughs> big chop chops big chop chops <laughs> chop chops are good um, I guess since I talked mostly about this one you want to talk about your truck at all mm. I don't want to put a schedule on him because I don't know what the full plan is yet and he doesn't know. Spray. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, I mean, has has my, has that truck been on the channel at all? I don't think so. I don't think you've ever seen this truck. You yeah. might have seen pictures of it, like, if you've, yeah, if you've, like once or twice that I've posted pictures. If like, you've been on the Instagram and stuff, you may have seen it. It's kind of far back. Um, if, if I have pictures of it on my phone or something like that, you'll see them right here. Yeah. There's definitely some. Yeah. I know I have a couple, too. But um, yeah, so my truck, 1959 uh, Ford F100 custom cab. Um, it's got the big back window, the wraparound window. Um, some people say it's like you're in a fishbowl, but I really enjoy the uh, no blind spot aspect of it. Um, that was my dad's, handed down to me. Um, I started working on it with him when I don't know, we were probably what, like 13 years old? I think we were 13 or 14, yeah, probably yeah, that around point, yeah. 13. Um, because it, it was during the car shows and stuff that yeah, we had. It had a, um, it had a big block 390 in it, it was bored 30 over, so it was like a 396 or something weird like that. Um, I put a intake, new carburetor, we redid the exhaust, mm -hmm. new disc brakes in the front, tires, did a whole bunch of stuff to it. Um, we had had the engine out of it probably like three times. Yeah, probably at that point. Yeah, because it always had problems. It would. It was never just like a turnkey truck. Um, I think the truck knew that where it was, it knew it was in a Chevy location. Yeah, it just wanted to torture us <laughs> like endlessly, and yeah. then it all kind of ended up with the cam swap being the killer for it. Yeah, so that was like <laughs> what, like 2017 or probably 2018? 20. It might have been because you, I think, were. In high school still, or were you out of high school yet? I was out of high school. So it was probably 27. I think it was like right after I yeah. got out of high school. Um, I decided I wanted to put a bigger cam in it, get a little more, a little more chop chop, and we put um, a new intake manifold on it. Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of there's like a bunch of stuff that went. Yeah. It was like a, it was like a thousand dollars in new parts into the engine and the truck in general for like that kind of time period that we were working on mm -hmm. it, and then um, I don't know. What it was, either when I was adjusting the valves, I over tightened one or something, but it pushed a lifter, a push rod yeah. pushed a lifter down into the lifter valley <clears throat> and then smacked on the cam. So that pretty much grenaded the engine. I mean, yeah, metal it, went through everything. It yeah. could have been saved, but I mean, at the time, I didn't have the money to pour into it and take it to a machine shop and right. all that. So. I just ended up selling the heads, like pretty much everything off of it, except the block, pretty much just the rotating assembly. I think it's still- You have a block and a rotating assembly. I think it's still out back. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I plan, I plan at some point to save that motor and, you know, take do it to a machine it, yeah. shop and see if it's salvageable and, you know, do all that. But I mean, now that I have some money, I could do that. But I mean, we have other projects right now that are- We have other plans with stuff. That um, take precedent. But, um, right. and what's funny is, so his dad, for what year is his Suburban? He has a 66. Yeah, a 66, 66 Suburban. He had asked me a couple weeks ago or something, 
if he could rob the rear tires off my truck because they yeah. were still pretty new because I had just gotten them right before the, yeah, the motor I mean, blew. And then, um, yeah, he threw those on his on his Suburban, so now my truck's sitting on stilts. <laughs> it's sitting on stilts out back right so, now. Um, I'll probably just I'll probably just let him have those. Honestly, at this point, I mean, because I'm just going to get new wheels and tires at some point anyway, so it's not like I'm going to need them. But. Right. Well, and you know, all the different stuff that we're we've been throwing around different ideas like the past couple weeks, especially oh my God. thinking about anything from, I mean, this ridiculous. Well, so the original plan was so I think it was about what, like a year ago? Yeah, about a year ago. I bought um, so he got a 289. Yeah, I. From Where'd you even get that? It was some guy, so that was with that F one hundred that I we got. So oh, we went yeah, up so yeah, yeah. little short story. We went up to <laughs> I don't even know where we went up, like up uh was that eighty? Mm, I think okay. it was up eighty. Kinda going up towards Rito for us, um, in NorCal. Um and kinda went up to up to Sierra and there was a truck for free. It was a seventy three, I think is what it was. F one hundred short bed four wheel drive. Actually a cool truck. Yeah. Um we made it run and drive and just did some um, it was super rusty, but made it run and drive. And then I think I, I sold it to that guy. I sold it um, to that guy. Basically traded him the truck for um, a 289. I think like 100 bucks and a nine inch some parts. That oh um, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, but and then I got all that stuff and then I gave him. I sold the 289 to you. Yeah, you and, sold it to me for like 800 bucks or something. Yeah, it was 600. Yeah, and it was like it was, it's a yeah. you know it's a complete engine. I it mean, was, it I had a fastback Mustang, so it was yeah like a 67 or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's a hypo. Supposedly yeah. like 70,000 original miles yeah, or something super, like that. Yeah, It's all original engine, so it was. Um. So that was the plan was to put that in there with like an AOD or something. Just um, for to make it drive and so he can have fun with it because that's 14 right. gears in the back too. So. He definitely wants that AOD. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we've been throwing around all different ideas. Um, you know, we talked about putting an LS in it just because, you know, at least for me personally, I don't really care if it's a Ford or a Chevy engine that goes in it anymore. I used to be kind of that way. Or it's like, oh, it can't be a Chevy engine in there. It's like, well, at this point, I'd rather just have, you know, running, driving a fun, fast Truck, truck that has a you know cool sounding motor in it. I don't really care what the purists say, so sorry. Well, and it's a, <laughs> for me, it's I mean it, being a '50s truck. I'm like I know it's you know a '59, which is you know. And it's by there. it's by, just real quick. It's by no means stock at all. It no. has been like chopped. It has been chopped. Like I think it was a long bed. It used to be a right? long yeah. bed. Someone did a really janky short bed conversion. There's like wooden shims in between the frame and the bed. Yeah. Um, there's a good amount of rust. It's not, it is like, it's not like a perfect truck. So that's kind of like, it's, that's kind of the reasoning behind it's why we're It's a little okay ratty. It. So yeah, we're, we don't have issues with putting an LS or something in it. No. We, I mean, we, we were joking last night about there was a, there's Hemi's and stuff you can put in it, like a late model Hemi, I mean, even, but we're not going to go Mopar because yeah, we don't, don't know Mopar. I don't really know all that Chrysler. Time. Uh, I don't, I want, <laughs> I don't want to have to learn that kind of stuff immediately. Um, but so that's kind of the plan with that. We're, we're not putting a plan or expectation on that truck anytime soon. You guys might see us like talking about it in the future. Yeah. Cause it's, um, it's like one of those things you're going to keep forever just because of the sentimental value. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, we might do like a crown Vic front end of it. You might, we might do Mustang, Mustang two, two, something like I mean, that. And what's funny too back, I mean. is when we were younger working on it, we were trying to figure out what front ends could go in it. And um, there's like some weird front out of front end out of oh, like, like a, a Jaguar, a Jaguar or, something. or yeah. something, which would have given me like you know power disc brakes and coilovers right. and all that with stuff. Nice but stuff. with the rear end too, because we had the rear end stuff too, right. so you would have had independent rear suspension too. Yeah, which would be kind of cool. But, but yeah, that's kind of where that truck sits right now. It's kind of you know it's we call it the sad boy truck whenever we're walking around the property, cause especially right it, now. It's, yeah, it's just sitting there on blocks. <laughs> But um, very sad. You'll definitely see it at some point. It's a uh, it's a cool truck. Hopefully this year at some point, like once we get a few other stuff yeah. out and yeah. some of the customer cars that you guys don't get to see. Yeah. Um, but we'll hopefully get to have that out. Um, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's it it would make for some for some interesting content because it right. likes to fight us on stuff. It does. <laughs> and then that kind of rolls into my truck that I want to build, which I don't think I've shown you guys anything about it yet i might have like posted a few like little pictures of it here and there but um it's a 62 i think is what it is um 
I think 62 or 63. I don't remember. Um, I don't even remember what year my truck is. Um, but it's a one-ton Chevy truck. It's actually technically right now it's a flatbed truck. Um, but it's a straight six, 235 stove bolt straight six right now. And it's my dad bought it probably about 10 years ago at this point. Um, and then I sold a bunch of stuff for him and how I and then he paid me by giving me the truck. Um, so my plan with that truck now, because I was going to originally make it into a really sick tow vehicle because I've always wanted a flatbed truck as a tow vehicle and, you know, maybe have hater pipes in the top and put a big block in it and make, make it kind of cool. Um, but then recently I've been kind of thinking about, because I'm, I'm trying to think about doing it for like cheap, like dirt cheap, as minimum stuff as possible with the truck. Um, and from builds that we have around here, we have a five lug disc brake kit for it out of like a 70 C10. Um, we have a five lug rear end out, out back, it's a 12 bolt rear end. Um, and then there's a half ton bed, out, long bed bed out back um, that we have. So then I was thinking about literally just, and there's a three quarter ton chassis out there. That's a long bed 60, I think it's a 65 chassis. Um, so I'm thinking about right now pulling that cab off the one ton chassis putting that on the three quarter ton with the long bed bed and it's all similar patinas and put the disc brakes on it put the rear end in it um, I have a 350 that I got from the wrecking guard like five years ago at this point um, that 350 oh, yeah. that we got mm -hmm. um, and then I have a set of Edelbrock aluminum heads I've been trying to sell for right at four months and literally no one's bought them <laughs> I've gotten like 50 replies on those, but legit no one comes to get them. So I'm like, if no one buys these in like the next three months, I'm putting my engine together with those heads and y'all can shove it. I mean, that's kind of what I'm buy, at at this point. Buy his stuff. Yeah, buy my stuff so I can like fund <laughs> everything else. Um, but I mean, they're 20216 heads. They're up for a TBI motor, but I don't care. I mean, it's a they're good heads and they're I think 175 uh, intake runners. So I mean, they're, they're probably good to the 400 horsepower and I'll put a kind of a lumpy cam in it and try to make it pretty rowdy and then recently depending on what other stuff we do as far as like fundage and stuff like once I get the truck together we might start like putting money into the truck and like not mess with the body at all so it's like a rowdy old truck but it might have you know QA1 coilovers in the back or whatever happens as far as how much money I can gain in the next you know two three years that's what will happen with that money um, we definitely like putting really nice parts on stuff that stuff that doesn't look the part right so much right which and i mean we've we've been watching roadkill forever that's kind of their that's, thing yeah. too we just you know we just think it's such a cool idea and because there's nothing really better at least in our opinion than no. putting nice stuff on old stuff right and then you know being able to make it usable like just like the C10, I mean, we're putting some pretty nice stuff in it, but it'll still be, you know, depending on who buys it, um, you know, it could be just a simple, nice cruiser, mm -hmm. or you could still kind of use it as a farm truck. Right. Um, so, you know, kind of depending on, you know, the person that wants to go for it, right. but that's kind of, that's kind of what we're about in terms of... I, that's kind of what we're trying to do, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and I mean, I have my Nova and stuff, but my Nova, I mean... It's, it's a nice car, but I mean, still, I'm still thinking of it kind of as a, it's a fun car to drive and stuff. So I'm like, yeah. And there's also the other side Multi, of it too. Multifunctional comes car. to mind. Yeah. And with that car, I'm, you know, I want to do it right. So then that way I don't actually have any parts for it. I never buy actually parts for it because I want to buy the QA1 suspension. So I don't buy like with drag shocks because I want to be able to drive it and, and have all the other stuff. So, right. That car is probably going to be the same way for a little while. I have an overdrive for it that I'm going to probably put it in. It's a Laycock, technically, um, but it's a gear vendor's design, um, if that helps you guys um, at all. And I'll probably put that behind my Turbo 350, and I'll shorten my drive shaft and do all that. And that way, I have the Turbo 350 strength with an overdrive, so that way, with my gears and stuff, I can drive 65, 70 on the freeway without turning 3,000 RPM. <laughs> Which is what it does currently. Which I can't go more than 62 at <laughs> three grand um, because gears and drag racing. But um, you'll probably see more videos on the Nova periodically of me actually doing maintenance to it because I left a headlight went out. Uh, I need to change spark plugs. I need to change my air shocks. Um, I need tires. <laughs> Just, you know. Bunch of little stuff. Bunch of little stuff that the mechanic doesn't actually work on his own car. 
because he works on other people's cars or other stuff that he's busy doing. So that is the truth. That is the truth. Um, and then outside of that, there's um, the other main car that I think you guys are going to see closest is the 73 Nova that has been yeah. in mothballs for right at about 20 years. Um, that is my technically it's my dad's first car that he bought when he was in high school when he was 16 years old he bought that car um, and he proceeded to drag race that car and throughout the preceding probably 20 years after he bought that car it slowly became a tubbed fully caged about it's probably a 1090 car at this point now yeah um, and then of course when kids came along um, I think in 2002 is last time it was actually at the racetrack um, which of course he won the whatever race he was at, he won. Um, Man, but that was, that was a long time ago. That was, yeah, 2002. I think it was September 11th in 2002. It was the last time it ran. We've been talking um, about dragging that thing out for 10 forever. Probably since, yeah, ever. Yeah. Uh, but it's a 383 stroker. I mean, it has 17, 17 and a half inch wide slicks in the back. Um, it's a pretty rowdy little, <laughs> little car. It's probably, it's a 1090 car. And last probably especially since i've got out of high school and i started racing the no my nova a lot um, my dad's been kind of poking me to try to get that car out um because not only does he want to see that car out but he wants me to save my nova because my nova is a two-year car so um he doesn't want me to tear my car up anymore yeah. so and if there's a 1090 bracket car sitting there you should use it um yeah. we just need to buy tires and some other stuff which um, once we get some other projects out of the shop, that one will roll in. Um, Which, that'll be a really cool series. That'll be a really cool series, and you're going to see us drag racing, hopefully in March. That's kind of my goal, is March yeah. or April, because that's when Wednesday nights uh, start back up at Sacramento Raceway. Um, and currently, if you've been watching the last few episodes of The Daily Misfire on YouTube, um, you've been seeing that I've been going to the points races at Sac Raceway. Um, so hopefully, once we get the no that Nova running, I'll be able to run it in that and I'll be a whole lot more competitive than I am right now so yeah and a whole lot faster and a whole lot faster <laughs> a whole lot faster that'll be that'll be really fun faster is always more fun definitely um a couple other questions that we were given after our project car update for all y'all um is one guy asked what's your favorite car so for me it's kind of a mixed bag <laughs> just because <laughs> For for me, I like there's there's very sm there's very few markets of cars that I don't enjoy. I really like you know all the old classic stuff, which is what I you know grew up working on with him and doing all that stuff. Obviously, I have my '59, and I love that. I also gravitate towards the JDM market. I love mm -hmm. like the '90s Japanese cars. Um, I think they're really cool. I mean, obviously, they're going way up in value right now, which kind of sucks but um yeah i love that stuff i like i like the supercars i like all that stuff there's a lot like i said there's really you know very few things that i don't like but if there were if i had to choose one um i would probably go for some sort of i don't know maybe like a like a cobra or something like that like a 66 yeah probably that's i think because i mean that's like you can't really beat that no you can't it's that's... just like i mean there's obviously like there's a lot of like more expensive cars on there mm -hmm. or you know on the market but um to me personally the shelby cobra is just that's a good one yeah that's really that's, good i mean i ever since i was a kid my dad talked about how the cobra was like the coolest thing, <laughs> coolest ever, thing ever and that i mean that may or may not have influenced my decision <laughs> um but hey, that, that's a big heavily influence on your stuff. And what's also cool is since they make the uh, the Factory 5 kits for them. Oh, yeah. That what the Factory 5s, is that what they're called? I have some cool stuff I need to log into, so give me a sec. Yeah, he's doing Zoom stuff. Um, 2021 so weird. But what's cool about those, and I know a lot of people know about them, but I mean, you know, they have all the performance that you'd want, you know, all like new susp upda updated suspension, updated motors, um, mm -hmm. you know, all the updated, you, you know, f f not futuristic, but current stuff that you would see or put on, you know, your other resto mod cars. Mm -hmm. um, on those is just, I've I've heard great things. I've never driven one, but I see them all the time, and like you can tell they're not like you know original 
Cobras, but um, yeah, just something about the body lines, and then you see those those pipes going mm -hmm. down the side. I don't know. I'm a sucker for that. Yeah. That's super cool. You're probably going to say like some Chevy truck or something. No. <laughs> I'm going to say my Nova because I'm that person. I like my Nova. I've had that car since I was 13 years old, so. Yeah. Well, I've... if it's if it's favorite car that you that you don't have that you that I, you know, that I don't have right now. That you don't have right now for me, it's the Cobra, but favorite car that I have, obviously, yeah, definitely my right. truck. Definitely the 59. Well, and my biggest so the biggest car that I'd want that I don't have right now, because I'm the person that I don't have my favorite car. I have my fit. I have the things that I want to build. So yeah. the things the, I think the biggest thing that I'd want to build personally is a right at this point in time is probably a sixty set, probably sixty eight or nine Camaro or Firebird, depending on yeah. either it's either that body style or it's the split bumper Camaro body style. Um, and I want to build a patina. Um, road course car so like an ls with a t56 in it and do qa1 or ride tech suspension in it um and just have an absolutely ripper car and have a riot in that in that car because i think that would just be the coolest thing to have fun with because i always see those cars and i've sat in cougars and stuff where they actually have five speeds in them and stuff and it's a which and you sit in it and it's a whole different feeling than like sitting like on a bench seat and like mine over or something so yeah um there's always that kind of car um, that I've always thought would be really cool to have. And so that's kind of where I'm at. I've never been the person that's like, I want the 2021 Corvette or whatever. Yeah. I'm never, I'm not that ultimate dream car guy. I'm always the person that's like, I dig that car and I want to build this car and I want to build this. And I have, you know, about like a 55 Chevy Gasser. I want to, I think that's cool. Yeah. But shout out to Mike Finnegan for ruining me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, there's just kind of that kind of stuff that I want to do. Um, and then another question, I think we answered that pretty well. Yeah. As far as that. I, I mean, uh, the only other thing I'd add on is like, you know, as any car car guy or girl would know, would say, you know, it's hard to say what one your car. for one car, the, what your favorite car is. I think a lot of people can resonate with that because there's, you know, yeah. so many cool things you can go do with so many different cars. Depending on our funds, probably the next 10 to 15 years, that you might see us having, you know, three or four cars or it might balance out to, you know, 10 to 20 cars that are in various states of hot roddedness. Yeah, um, definitely. Between the two of us and that way it's going to be, you know, a road course car, the drag racing car. We, I, I've always dug having a front engine dragster. I mean, that's yeah. me. I've always thought that that was a, that's a super cool idea, uh, which you can tell just with this right here. That's we can think of probably about five or six cars that were like, dude, that'd be super cool. That'd be mm -hmm. really cool. Like a Stingray Corvette, like a '63 Corvette with yeah. with a LS in it, or a 427. That'd be kind of cool. One of those in my years. Again, you start thinking because car guys, and you start. So. But. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it on the on yeah. the favorite car front. Lots of things you can do. I Always agree. good to keep your options open because you know you could right. you could see a good deal for like your dream car, so to mm -hmm. speak. But um, you know, if you see something, there, there's always something else. There's always something. You out never there. know. I mean, we we scan Facebook yeah, Marketplace and Craigslist time. all the time. So there, and there's just tons of stuff out there. Well, kind of yeah. and kind of like what we're trying to show you with the C10 project is you know you. It like, might. like he said in the video that he, I don't, has that, yeah, that, that, yeah, that came up. out, yeah, that's the um, intro video for you guys. You can still find stuff for less than five grand and still right. put. And of course, our battery died on the camera, so I had to just change it. That's why we cut out. Oh, well. We like to talk, apparently. <laughs> that was a fully charged battery, too. Um, it is an old camera. Yeah. I guess I will say that. But, all right, moving through the rest of your questions that you guys have. That was really hard to say. I don't know why. Um, the rest of your questions. Um, another question was, what's your ultimate dream? That was a very open-ended question. You can go a lot of ways with that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to cut away for like 10 seconds and let us think about this. And then come back. Well, I mean, ultimate dream is pretty much be self-sufficient you know to where we're making our own money and so Whether that we can fund the things that we want to do 
you know, buy property, build a house, mm -hmm. whole bu whole bunch of different stuff, build a shop. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah. I mean, at least where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of where we're both at. I'm like, I don't know how much we're gonna be like doing it as far as like compadre duo to do it, but um, we kind of have the same goal in yeah. mind. You know, I think we're both trying to move out of state. We're, we're both. <laughs> We were talking about it the other day. Um, we've kind of realized as we've gotten older that we don't want to be around as many people. <laughs> <laughs> the older we get, the more uh, antisocial and isolated we want to be. It's like, just let me work on my cars. Yeah, let me work on my cars. Let me, you know, get paid working on other people's stuff and just kind of leave me alone and I'll show you guys what we're doing and enjoy this side of it because we enjoy this part of it. Yeah. But it's the uh, negative socialization that we don't appreciate. Especially it comes in California, especially, I feel like. Yeah. Californians, I think, would understand what we're talking about. Or people who have been to California, I think, would understand that. Yeah, there's um, a kind of, uh, I don't know. People just, you come to California thinking that it's going to be, like, this big, great thing. And then it's like, oh, it's so expensive. And there's a lot of people. And if that's your thing, then, you know, then right. have fun. But I don't like paying $4 <laughs> for gas. I don't like having to pay a bunch of taxes on my stuff. I don't like having to pay... A lot of insurance or well, like registration we were, or like you were saying the other day it's like the allure of california you know the the coast the 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 snow up in tahoe or you know anywhere along the mountain range there um the weather the weather um there's i mean disneyland i mean you got yeah different stuff down south and then there's stuff up in norcal too there's a lot of stuff that you there's you but that that's what you pay for when you live in california but how often do we actually you know Use, use those things yeah i mean not very often i haven't been in the barrier or san francisco in years i mean i go a little, a little more often than he does but, but you were you lived down there, I, li so. I used to live there and uh, so i mean we're both yeah. kind of at the m mindset of if i can live somewhere else that's cheaper for me i can fly out to california and see friends and family and it's still gonna be cheaper for me yeah <laughs> than definitely. it is to live here so it's we're kind of working on that and buying property out of state which i'm not going to tell you where we're moving because um that's probably a surprise if you guys were going to talk about that later. When the but time comes. When the time comes, we're going to talk about that more. Um, but it has the ability to buy a lot more property for a lot cheaper than what we would here. Somewhere a lot cooler and potentially a lot more car friendly and uh, more towards, I think, what we both want as people and yeah. life. I think the slower life somewhere else would be a lot better, too, for both of us. Definitely. Less stress, chiller all yeah. that um so we're that's kind of the same answer i think for both of us that pretty much moving buying property building house shop race repeat, yeah race or, race buy cars buy more cars buy more, buy more cars. cars yeah enjoy <laughs> life yeah, yeah pretty much um and then the last one is our shop update now that we've yeah. kind of got through some of your guys's questions um which we appreciate those the more questions you can give us the more content we can give you so keep them up um but our shop update, I think, is we're kind of going through a lot right now um, with my schooling and stuff. I'm trying to get, I took a lot more units this semester, so the shop's a little bit slower. So um, if there are customer cars or people out there that are wanting us to work in your cars, please give us a little bit more time. And also, enter this guy, which is why he's, um, we kind of talked a little bit about his schedule being a little bit more open. Um, but we're not a full-time shop, obviously. We're part-time yeah. out here. Um, but we're going to be kind of more full-time I guess if you say if you will I'm um, doing a lot more video stuff doing a lot more other stuff and because he has the ability to be out here more so we'll have more people working out in the shop so we'll hopefully be able to start working on turning a whole lot more cars out hopefully in the next eight months once we get a repetition and a schedule going um, definitely we still got to clean out a lot of the shop once we start getting a few of the cars out yeah do a lot more cleaning hopefully when spring and it stops raining um, that way you can have more fun and hopefully get more equipment so we have the ability to show a whole lot more like GoPros and stuff. That'd be yeah. cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Like I have a cheapo GoPro, but it doesn't work very well. So, um, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, we got the Novas, we got the trucks, we got stuff, Suburbans. A lot of cool stuff in the works. A lot of cool works. stuff in the works. We're hoping to do a lot more racing outside of just drag racing this year. Um, we're talking about doing autocross stuff, doing actually or at least going to a couple events for autocross um, mm -hmm. now that restrictions and stuff, especially for 
um, racing events and stuff are starting to loosen a little bit. Yeah. Um, because of, hopefully that trend will continue. Yeah, the mask um, shackles that we have right now. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think that's where we're at right now. I think this is a pretty good first podcast for you guys. I think, yeah. I feel like, which will probably at least for the very least for the start be on YouTube with all these. Um, I was thinking about putting them on Spotify. I don't know how that's gonna work, but that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, we'll see. You know what, what your guys' reception is of all this, and we'll go from there. Yeah, but very cool. All right. Until next time. Hopefully, we'll try to do this once a week. But until next time, keep up on Instagram. More features of our car builds and all that. Um, until about until then, catch you guys later. Peace. I think that was good.